Hi everyone, my name is Raziel Kane and I'm back with another RK's voice acting. Everyone who knows me knows that I like to talk. You've seen me in streams with fellow YouTubers and it's something that stands out. I talk. And sometimes I talk pretty fast. But the following voice actor has me beaten by a long shot. In his most known role, Blur is a character that always stood out from the rest of the crew. And it's all thanks to John Mashita Jr. John Mashita Jr. was born August 6, 1954 in New York City, New York but grew up in Long Island with his Italian family. He jokes that his heritage gave him an edge to become the fastest talking man because his family was always loud and fast talkers. When he was 12 years old, he lived near a cerebral palsy therapy group that would hold telethons each winter, and John would go in the freezing temperature door to door to collect money for the charity, then he'd call in with his earnings. He'd get a kick, as most kids would, from hearing his name on the television. One day, the charity announced in the paper that they would donate $2,000 for cerebral palsy for anyone who broke a record in the Guinness Book of World Records. John wanted to get in on that. First, he wanted to do a marathon ride on the roller coaster at Coney Island, but they said no because the record was two weeks and he was 12 years old. He went back home and started flipping through the record book and decided that he wasn't going to eat a car or swallow a pipe, which didn't appeal to him. His second choice was holding his breath, which he practiced in his pool. John said he got nowhere near the record and gave himself a massive headache. His third idea was to beat the fastest speech record, which at the time was the quickest read of the entire to be or not to be soliloquy from Hamlet. John locked himself in his room and recited to be or not to be endlessly. He got so good at it that he was able to recite it in 19 seconds, beating the established record. When he went to the charity to get evaluated, the judge that were there were only qualifying physical records, so he didn't get verified then. But eventually he did get the chance to break the record, and he did it using You Got Trouble from The Music Man. He did his bit, which is 534 words in 58 seconds, which the judge reviewed to 586 words in a minute, establishing a new record. John majored in theater, and he wanted to be in show business. When he was 18, he moved to Manhattan, and was a contestant on $25,000 Pyramid. He won $10,500 that helped him get started in life and also got him noticed by Bob Stewart, the creator and executive producer for the show. When Mr. Stewart started another show, he hired John and gave him his start in what he always wanted to do. This eventually led him to a job at Warner Brothers on the experimental two-way multi-program cable television system called Cube, which was a major project at the time. In 1977, Cube would have people interact directly with a TV program. It paved the way for several concepts that evolved into pay-per-view programs, special interest cable television networks, and interactive services. John said it was a great training group. He got to produce and host several shows, and stayed there for two years before moving to Los Angeles in 1977. In his first year in California, during a party he did his party trick, and drew the attention of someone who worked on That's Incredible, a popular show at the time. He wanted to put John on the show, who refused originally. But when the actor's strike came about and nobody was working, and after receiving several phone calls, John accepted. He went on the show alongside someone who could actually be heard properly if you played a reel backwards, and a simultaneous talker, who could say what you're saying as you're saying it. Now, I don't know if that was Frank Raines who's famous for it, but it's pretty amazing to watch. So these three speech-related performers were all part of the Thanksgiving special that would air that year. He was at the same time working on a play called The Mad Woman of Shayo, so he sent out flyers to promote himself to casting and advertising agency, mentioning both the upcoming show and the play, and also sent it to MCI, a telephone long-distance call company. The person who handled the MCI account also worked on the Federal Express account, and had decided to listen to the show. When the show aired, Federal Express came up with the famous Federal Express commercial. John became an overnight success after That's Incredible, and his phone wouldn't stop ringing. He was rapidly booked on The Tonight Show, The Merv Griffin Show, The Mike Douglas Show, and started negotiating with Federal Express. People Magazine also paid him a visit. John eventually got his own board game, Motormouth. 
John wasn't sure if it was the popularity of the show, his pamphlets, or just the fact that everyone watched the show on Thanksgiving that prompted him to being such in high demand. But he didn't mind. He did resent the fact that no one would consider him as an actor. All everyone wanted was the same party trick. Thinking of himself as an actor first, John only thinks that fast talk is only one of his skills. Once the Federal Express commercial aired in 1981, that changed. Now he was seen as an actor who could talk fast, not the other way around. At first he got roles for fast talking characters like Blur and tons of advertisement. In an interview with GeekNewsNetwork.net in 2020, John mentions that he worked for over 350 companies of the Fortune 500 companies. One of his most famous collaboration is of course Micro Machines. He recorded over a hundred commercials that aired. A bit of trivia, he was actually once voted public enemy number one by the Court Stenographers Association of America, who said if you see this man enter your court, run. All this eventually led him to the show we all love, the Transformers. But before we get to that, let's take a look at John's roles, on TV and voiceovers. He started with a few small roles in movies such as Young Doctors in Love, where he played a patient. He got to play in five episodes of the series Madame's Place. He was in an episode of Zorro and Son as Corporal Cassette and played in three episodes of Matt Houston. He was a regular on the short-lived The Half Hour Comedy Hour, hosted by Arsenio Hall and Tom Sharp. He guest starred in other shows including Trapper John M.D. as Danvers and The A-Team as Jason Burnett. His first credited voice work was Gork in the movie Star Chaser, The Legend of Orin, followed by Blur in the Transformers the movie. Nice dino, good dino, sweet dino, won't you step into the nice spaceship for Blur? Pretty please, pretty 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 please, nice dino, good dino, with sugar on top and a cherry and some whipped cream, nice dino, good dino, sweet dino! John is one of the few actors who played new Transformers from the movie to reprise his role in season 3 of the show. I got an idea, maybe not a good idea, but an idea, you know, football will play, you're gonna learn fast because they have a play called the Razzle Dazzle He's also credited in season 4 as Sponge Counterpunch. Wingspan and Pounce, what are those spies up to? Time for me to do a little spying of my own as a Decepticon. And Blowpipe. Call me Blowpipe because I want to blow those rebels away. You may have seen him in the movie Talking Walls as Hal, or in Dirty Laundry as the Fast Talking Lawyer. He guest starred on Saved by the Bell as Mr. Testaverde, played Flash in the TV movie Who Shrunk Saturday Morning, and was the radio announcer in Dick Tracy. Funny sad story for this role, he was originally set to play Mumbles, because Warren did he thought it would be funny to have the fastest talking man to play a slow paced character. He unfortunately got replaced by Dustin Hoffman when he became available, but Warren gave him another role, the announcer, but John was dressed in a yellow suit. So in post-production, they realized he was the only character other than Dick Tracy to wear yellow, so they cut his part to only his mouth. It's weird how things turn out in show business. In Sesame Street, he played two characters, being Man with Long Name Baby and Porter Pepper. He portrayed Herb Leventhal in Bobby's World, Supersonic Seymour in Garfield and Friends, and Mr. Crud in Blank Man. On the show Chicago Hope, you heard him as an auctioneer. On the Big Easy, he played Fast Eddie, and in a fan favorite show Pinky and the Brain, he incarnated Mr. Sackett. In the 2000s, he had some appearances in shows like Ally McBeal and Cousin Skeeter. But he did get a chance to reprise the role of Blur in the Transformers animated show, one of the rare G1 actors who got to play his character again. Following that, he played in Family Guy, Adventure Time and Acting Out, and he did a couple of voices on Robot Chicken, even ripping himself off by voicing a parody of the Micro Machine Man. As you can see, John did a whole lot more commercials and acting roles, but he's definitely remembered for both. The fact that he mastered the fast speech craft gave him an edge, and it got him in show business where he left his mark. We Transformers fans will always remember him for Blur, but there's tons of people who will never forget the Federal Express commercial or the Micro Machine ones. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of John Mashita's career. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Also leave a comment, I really like reading you guys. Keep coming back, I have more on the way. And remember, nothing in life gives you the right to be an asshole. Take care!